Amen. Turn with me, if you will, over to John chapter number 7. John 7. I have a lot of information. I doubt if I get through all of it tonight. Because I don't plan on holding you too long. It's cold outside. It's cold outside. Amen. John, St. John, chapter number 7. a lot of information in this text, but when you have it, say amen. Amen. Scripture says, after these things, Jesus walked into Galilee for him. He did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the, now the Jews' feast of the tabernacle was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, depart, depart from here and go into Judea that your disciples that that your disciples also may see the works yeah that you are doing for yeah, for no one does anything in secret while this is his brother's talking for no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly if you do these things, show yourself to the world. Show yourself to the world. For, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come. Father, we thank you for yet another day, another opportunity, Master, just to come before you. We thank you, God, for allowing us this day. We thank you, God, for having grace and mercy upon all of us. God, we thank you for all the things that you've done, and we thank you for the things that you're getting ready to do. God, we need you. Master, forgive us of our sins and all the sins of omission and code that we have done against you. And, and Master, we need you to open up our minds, our hearts, open up our eyes, God. Continue to give us clear vision. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. 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 And amen. As you're going to your seat. I dare you to touch three people and simply just tell them after this, after this, after this. Amen. After, after this, after this, after this, after, after this. I, I, I've been dealing and we, we, we have been dealing um, amen. Uh, with vision, we've been dealing with with vision, and in this year of 2020, we read the scripture the other day, and it began to talk about how the man looked up and realized that he saw everything clearly, and he had 2020 vision. He had perfect vision. He looked up and was able to see everything clearly. So today I kind of want to stay in that same vein because oftentimes what happens is is that we begin to get blurry. We get blurry blurry vision and inside of blurry vision 
Amen. You can't see anything clearly, and we allow things to cloud our, our vision. Somebody say vision. This is Bible study, so I'm going to give you some scriptures. Amen. This is, we have to deal in scripture when it comes to Bible study. Amen. Because sometimes I get up and I tell a story, and then we'll find, we'll find the scripture in the story. But, but today, I just want to just deal with just clear vision. Amen. Somebody say clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. Clear vision. If you look at the scripture, you'll find out, amen, in this, in, in this scripture right here, Jesus had just finished operating and doing some miracles. It took a couple of months uh, as far as their travel time. They had not seen him uh, for a little while because now they were trying to kill him. The Jews had sought to kill him. If you read the scripture, it said they sought to kill him. The reason that they sought to kill him because now they thought that he was now a, a blasphemous and began to blaspheming Almighty God because he began to do a, a healing and he did a healing on, on, on the Sabbath. He did a healing on, on a day of rest. He, 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 he healed the man, the, uh, the, the paralyzed man on a day of rest, a day that he was not supposed to be doing anything. Amen. A day that he was not supposed to be doing anything. So therefore, now he has the attention of all of those that were there. So, so they sought out to kill him. They said the scripture said that, that the Jews was trying to kill him. So, so, so Jesus started to go into somewhat of a hiding. He, he, he went into a hiding. He, he, went, into, he went into hiding. He, he, he said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to make myself known just yet. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 hang around here because uh, I need to hang here in Judea. I'm not going to go down to uh, Judea. I'm, I'm going to hang out here in Galilee. I'm going just, to just hang out just for a little while just so, just so some of this can settle down just a little bit because some of this can just settle down. Sometimes you got to get to a place where some things just need to settle down. Amen, somebody. Sometimes some, some stuff just need to just settle down just, just a little bit. Amen. It just need, it just need to calm. Somebody say calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Just, just calm down just a little bit. Jesus was, was trying to calm some stuff down just, just to taste. And, and, and then he, 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 he had some brothers that wanted him to go to the feast of the tabernacle. You know, the, fe the feast of the tabernacle. Wanted him to go to a joyous time. You have to understand and um, all of the feasts and all the, uh, a lot of the feasts, what they were doing is they would have a joyful time. It was, it was a, a jubilant time uh, that they would come together. People would come from all over the place, and, and, and they would have a wonderful time. They, they, it was a jubilant time. They had, they had a joyful time. It, it, it's like when we come together for a family reunion. Are oh, y'all looking at me strange? Hey, man. When, when we come together for a family reunion, everybody come together and, and we just have a, a good time, amen. We come and just have a wonderful time. They, they, would, they, would, they would light lights in the streets. They would take candlesticks and they would line up the streets because uh, the reason they would light candlesticks was, was simply to, 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 to make reference to um, when they were coming out of the wilderness and they were following, when Israel was following the fire by day and the fire by night. So therefore, the, the, the candlelights represented the, 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 the fire. And, and, and then they would, take, they would take water and go out and pour it upon, uh, pour it upon this, gold, uh, this gold sphere. When they poured upon the gold sphere, it, it representing the water that, that came out of the rock. They they would have a good time in remembering where they came from. Yeah. Amen. They, they, they remembered where they came. They didn't want to forget where they came from. So therefore, they will come together for the Feast of Tabernacles, celebrating that we are no longer in tents, but we have our own home. Uh, so y'all don't y'all don't want to have church tonight. It's okay. We're, we're, we're missing good shout moments right there because we weren't always where we are right now. I, I, I wish, I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church, amen, that, 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 that knew how to praise God when you realize you're not where you used to be. Yeah. I'm thankful for where I am now. And I'm thankful that I'm not where I used to be. I thank God. I'm still not in that same old little old spot way over in the corner. Of now, now I got a little bit of something that I can think because he has blessed me from this place into this place. Amen, somebody. That I'm not where I used to be. So now, so, so now we can look at it as, as a physical location and then we can look at that as a spiritual location. I'm glad I'm not as crazy as I used to be. Okay, I ain't got no witnesses in the building. It's okay. I ain't got no witnesses in the building, amen. There was a time I would cuss you out at the drop of a... Who am I talking to in the building today? 
Yeah, well, well, yeah, oh, okay, all right. I just, I'm, we just, we just talking. We just, can we talk, guys? Is that all right? Amen. I, I'm just glad I'm not as crazy. I'm not as dogmatic. I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't do all the things that I. I ain't there yet, but I. But I sure enough don't do what I used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. No, I'm not perfect. I still got issues. I still got problems. I got stuff that I fight with and struggle with every day. But I thank Almighty God that I'm not what I used to be. Do I have at least one witness in the building that don't give God's name a praise because you're not where you used to be? I thank God for progress every day. I thank God for bringing me just a little bit. Every, it's the small victories. I said no this time instead of saying yeah. I said no. I'm just, I'm just, I, maybe, 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 maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me that I, that I just thank God that I'm not where I used to be. So, 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 so they will come together and they will celebrate and they will have a wonderful good time because they are not where they used to be. Hey, Shawty. Hey. They have a good time because they are not where they where they used to be. They're not where they used to be. They're not where they used to be. The Feast of the Tabernacle. The Feast of the Tabernacle is six months away from the Feast of the Passover. It is six months away from the Feast of the of the Passover. Now, 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 it, it was a, it was a, it was an issue that was going on here. Um, he had some brothers. He had some brothers. Some half brothers. He had some half. He had some brothers, and uh, uh, they were his mother's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mother's children. And on his mama's side, made him half brothers. To, to the, so, so, so now I, I want you to look at it because they they grew up with him. They lived with him, and I'm sure. You know, over time, you can, you, you can look at some things and you can see that, that, that over time, um, you can find, uh, if you live with somebody long enough, you know their inconsistencies. And then you know the areas that they are blessed in. If you live with somebody long enough. He had some, he had some brothers that, 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 that he had lived with long enough. I, I, I can see that, you know, when, when, when Jesus was younger, he was doing all kind of things. I, 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 it doesn't say what he was doing, but I can just, it, I can just use my imagination. I can just use, use my sanctified imagination, if you allow me to, for just one moment. I, I can see him killing a cricket and bringing it back. Let's y'all on uh, we we just having fun tonight. Is that all right? I, I, I can see him doing some be, because I, I, I grew up with my brothers and I know the things that we used to do and I know how we used to hang out da down at the stream and we, and we would go crawfish fishing and we'd go down there and play and make them fight. We, we did all kind of things when we were growing up. We, we'd get up early in the morning and start fighting. But, you know, for first thing in the morning, we didn't even have breakfast and we fighting because somebody stole the wrong cover. Maybe, 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 maybe just I'm, I might be by myself. We, we had all kind of issues that we dealt with. So therefore, I understand and I know the strengths of my brothers and I know the weaknesses of my brothers as well. I know my older brother, I can hit him in a certain place and he'll fall right on down. Why? Because I got I had to learn because he was much bigger than me. So I had to learn how to fight. Amen. I had to learn how to. That was a big joker. I had to learn how to fight that guy. Amen. So I wasn't, I wasn't just going to take a beat down. I wasn't going to take one. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I'm not going to take no beat down. So, so, so sometimes I had to fight dirty. I had to learn. I had to learn. I had to learn his weaknesses. And, and then I had to learn his strengths. And I can see that Jesus grew up with his brothers. And, 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 and they could probably see, they saw all the wonderful things that he was doing. Even at the age of 12, he was in there teaching. In, yeah, in the synagogue. He was in the synagogue and he was teaching. And they saw and they witnessed all these great things. Now Jesus is hiding because they're trying to kill him. But yet, his brother said, well, why don't you go down there? Why don't you just go on down there? If you, if, if you, if you go down there to the feast, then you can show off. You can show off. All of yeah, you, you can show off uh, all of the men. You can show off who you really are. You can you can show off to the world who you really are. But then the next scripture said they didn't even believe in it. Hmm. Hmm. They didn't believe it, but they want him to go show off. 
They want, okay, we're we talking about blindness. They, 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 they want him to go show off. It was the pressure of his brothers trying to push him to a place where it wasn't time for him yet. Are, are y'all listening to me? Try to push him, pressure him into doing something that was not his time yet. Uh, are y'all following me? Sometimes, sometimes we can have people that will push us and it's not our time. They will try to pressure us and it's not our time to be pressured into doing something uh, that they want us to do, but not doing something that God want us to do. Okay, all right. Y'all going to make me talk in here a little bit tonight. That's fine. Sometimes we can be up under something called the, 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 the pressure to perform. Amen. The pressure to perform. You have to understand pressure. One of the things that happens inside of pressure, pressure um, inside of your vision, uh, what will happen with that is, is that it will cause something called uh, glaucoma. It will cause some, some, some things called uh, glaucoma. The natural eye disease uh, that causes blindness, amen, uh, comes from oftentimes pressure. It comes from pressure. It comes from, somebody say pressure. Pressure can cause blindness. Amen. Pressure can cause can cause blindness. And, and if I can look, look, look right here. Some of my notes here tonight. Uh, ocular uh, hypertension uh, means pressure in your eye. It means pressure in the things that you're able to see with. The, it, mean, it means pressure. You have, you have, you have pressure. And, and, and untreated pressure causes glaucoma, causes cataracts. Amen. We're just talking tonight. Amen. It, it, it causes it, it causes cataracts. Cataracts is, is, is when is when your eyes are now cloudy. When your eyes are cloudy and, and your lenses of your eyes become cloudy and now your vision, your vision is now fogged up. The brothers, the brothers tried to cloud his vision by adding pressure to push him to do something that he was not ready for and it was not his time to do. Amen. Am, am I talking in here tonight a little bit? I just want to make sure I'm, 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 on, the right, I'm on the right line. I, I, I have to look at all of my RNs and stuff that's in the building that, to make sure I'm getting the verbiage right. Amen. It, it, it causes pressure. Uh, gla glaucoma is, is pressure. To, it's too much fluid that's in your eye, which causes damage to the octave nerve, stealing your, your, your peripheral vision. You can't see from the sides. And then ultimately, it begins to close up on the inside of your eye. So therefore, you can't see clearly at all causing completely uh, blurred vision. Cause completely blurred vision because of pressure. Pressure then causes fluid. Fluid then, 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 then allows you to not be able to see the things that's coming on the side because it messes up your peripheral. So now I can't see anything that's coming at me from the side. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So it, so, so it makes it easier for me to be blindsided because I can't see what's coming at me because I've allowed the pressure to get to me. A am I talking to anybody tonight? Because uh, I've allowed the pressure to get to me. So now my, my, my vision is now becoming blurred because I've allowed pressure to get to me. Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody in the house that's, that's, that's going to talk just a little bit. Um, so, 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 so sometimes some of the problems that comes inside of your eyes is called uh, refractive errors. A refractive error is a problem with your eyeball, or your eyeball and your cornea when your lens and your cornea does not match up properly. They have to match up properly to allow light, to allow a light ray to come into your eye. When, once they don't allow, align up properly, it, it becomes, it, 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 it starts that whole blurred vision situation. And then, and then if it does not come cor correctly into your eye, uh, through your lens, through your cornea, from your cornea into your retina, which will cause then the light to come in, you have to understand, we have to have an open eye to be able to see anything at all. Uh, the thing is that God wants us to open up our our eyes so that way he can come in and be the light. He is the light of the world. And since he's the light of the world, that's where our focus must be. It must be on Christ and nothing else. 
often we focus on entirely too much, uh, too many other things that, 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 that causes us cloudy vision and blurred vision because we're not allowing the light to penetrate into our eyes. And since we're not allowing the light to penetrate what we do, we allow the evil things, the dark things, the, the dirty, the mess. Oh, I, I just said something real good right there. We allow the mess to penetrate through our eye gate. And since it begins to penetrate through our eye gate, then, then it blurs our vision because now we can't see properly because we're not allowing the light to come into our... Uh, I'm almost done with my little, my, my, little, uh, my, my little moment right here. Amen. Yeah, because the moment that we don't see the light, we don't see the light properly. We don't see the light uh, through, through the correct way because um, because the, everything has to be in proper alignment. Once it's in proper alignment, it has the proper shape. Then you can allow the the, the, the right light to get into your eye. So 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 sometimes the light kind of gets jacked up because we have natural things that could be wrong with us. Some of us are nearsighted. Then some of us are farsighted. Some of us are nearsighted, some of us, and then some of us are like me that has, uh, have astigmatism. We, we have stigmatism, and, and, and with all of those, it all deals with how the light reacts to your retina going through your cornea, through your lens. A am I saying this right? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Um, so, 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 so in that, you can see... Um, that with the pressure, it will cause light to not be able to filter properly through your, through your eye, all because of pressure, the pressure to perform. A lot of us in here have pressure to perform. Okay, let me see if I can break that down. We, we have pressure to, to perform. Well, well, what do you mean, Pastor? Um, uh, uh, most of us in the room have social media. Most of room have, have have social media accounts and, and 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 then we have people that are around us that, that that's always trying to pressure us and push us to do so oftentimes especially those that are on social media what what ends up happening there is is, is that we we often post and we, we we put messages and we and we do all these things we do all these all these wonderful things and and none of the stuff that's really online really reflect our lives as it is now it reflects hey, I'm, 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 I know I'm not gonna get a whole lot of amens right here but it's okay it, it reflects. It it, it it reflects what we really want to be, but not who we really are. Amen, somebody. So, 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 what what that means? I mean, that means we are really putting something up. Um, as one of the psychologists, I began to read some of his, and he, and he was saying that it, there is a, a, a issue, and this mic is messing up. There, there's an issue called the imposter. Yeah, yeah, the, the imposter. He, you, you, you now become an imposter. It's the imposter syndrome. Amen. Yeah, the imposter syndrome often is built because of the pressure to perform or the pressure to be like something or like someone else that you're really not. Amen. Hmm. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going to stay right there because everybody got real quiet right there. So, so now, so that we look like we're keeping up with everybody else, we'll post something that does not even look like our own situation. It looks like somebody else's situation. But now when somebody really meets you, you don't, you don't live up to what you're posting. Your life does not reflect what it is on, on, on social media than what it is really in life. So now I'm building up more pressure to be like something that I'm not. Amen. To be like something that I am not. I got to hurry up. To be like something that I'm not. Now, now, now deep down, I, I, I continue to read and say, deep down inside of this imposter syndrome, oftentimes a lot of us deal with it and don't even realize that we're really dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're dealing with the imposter syndrome. So, so inside of this, inside of the syndrome, um, oftentimes deep down on the inside of yourself, I know we're not going to admit it tonight because, you know, we're in a church setting and we want everybody to think that everything is perfect and everything is wonderful. I know that. You want everybody to sit beside you to think that you got it all together and everything is working out just fine, just well. But, 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 but there is something that's down on the inside that oftentimes um, that you will never even say to anybody at all, but you're really struggling. You're really struggling simply because you're trying to live up to something that you're really not and you don't want nobody to really know the things that you're really struggling with the stuff that you that, that you're fighting with on the inside you know those questions like 
Am I good enough? Am I, am I, am I good enough? Am I, uh, am I smart enough? Can I, can I really do this? Can I really be successful at this? Can I really run a business like, like that? And you begin to question yourself and you be, question your knowledge and question your education and, 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 and just question and keep questioning yourself because deep down you feel like you're not enough. You feel like you're, you're not enough. I'm just talking tonight. You feel like you're just, you're just not enough. And you're struggling with the fact that you really are enough, but you feel like you're not enough because you have all this extra pressure to perform when it's not your season to perform. All right, let's, let's go over a couple of these right here, and, I, and, and I'll leave you alone for tonight. Um, I, I looked at a couple of different things up under this, this, this imposter syndrome, and, and one of them was um, people who think that, that, that everything has to be perfect. Amen, somebody. It's called the perfectionist. Yeah, the perfectionist in, inside of the, the imposter syndrome, um, th this thing right here, it says, uh, perfectionists set a, a crazy high goals for themselves. And once they set these crazy high goals for themselves, when they fall, fail to reach the goal, uh, they experience uh, major self-doubt because they did not reach the goal that was so high that they set for themselves and they were not able to match up to the goal. So, so, now, so, so now they have doubt on themselves and can't even handle the situation that they're going through. So now, so now you begin to uh, doubt yourself. And then after you doubt yourself, then you, then you go into a depression because you didn't meet the goal that you set. Because everything around you have to be mm. that everything around you has to be perfect. Nothing can be out of line. I'm gonna preach to me tonight. Nothing can be out of line because I want everything to be to be perfect because I'm a perfectionist. I want everything to be just lined up just right. Everything got to be straight. Everything got to be in proper alignment. I need to do everything that God said for me to do and the, the way he wants me to do it, how he wants me to do it. Everything has to be perfect. But often that's pressure that you put on yourself and not pressure that God is trying to put on you. Uh, are y'all hearing me? Because I read that God would not put on you more than yeah yeah more, more than you can bear that that, that that he that he has compassion and he loves you and he has mercy so 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 therefore he's not really looking for you to be perfect he just wants you to try. Amen. Let me let me go back over here because y'all y'all don't want to hear me tonight y'all don't want to so 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 let's, let me let me see if you can ask a couple questions see if this applies to anybody in the room let's see have you ever have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? Ooh. Ooh, I ain't know I was gonna get that many yeses that fast. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Here's another question. I'm gonna just throw this out there. But uh, do you feel like uh, your work must be 100% perfect 100% of the time? Ooh, we just throwing just throwing some questions out there. Amen. Yeah. Do you have difficulty delegating? That's me. Do you have difficulty delegating? Even when you're, yeah, yeah, when you're able to do so, do you feel frustrated and disappointed in the results? Because mm. for me, being a perfectionist, what I want to do is I want to do all of it myself. Amen. I try, I try, I try. I'm going to do, do all of it myself. Uh, here's another, here's another, here's another complex uh, that's up under this, this, this imposter syndrome. It's, um, it's called being the superwoman or the superman. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Being the superwoman or the super, the super band. Uh, people who experience this phenomenon are convinced that they, that they're phonies among real, uh, uh, real deal colleagues. Mm-hmm. 
they often push themselves to work harder and harder to measure up to everybody else. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes it's just a false cover-up of their own insecurities. Right. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, work over, uh, overload may, may, may harm uh, not only their own mental health, but also, uh, I, I don't really want to say this, but, but, but I'm going to say it anyway. But also, but also it hurts and damages, amen, relationships with others. Because, simply because you want to be the superman or you want to be the super, the, the, the superwoman. Let me see if this applies. Let me see. See, let me just ask a couple questions just to see if this applies. I'm going to get back to my scripture in a second. Uh, do you get stressed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're not working and find downtime a complete waste. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ever take a vacation. Don't ever take time off. Don't, no, no. Don't ever get any rest. I'm, I'm trying to tell you I'm preaching to me tonight. Uh, don't ever get any rest. Don't ever take any time off. Don't ever... Don't ever sleep good. Don't, don't, don't ever get any rest. Because you're always trying your best, trying your best, amen, to do it all and say, yes, I got it. I can put it all on my shoulders. But yet, not only are you damaging yourself, you're damaging those that are around you and those that are close to you, those in your, in your corner and in your circle. All of your relationships is being damaged because now you're putting so much work into the things to impress somebody else. That you're not putting enough work to impress the one that's sitting beside you. And then you're not taking care of self. So the moment you stop taking care of self, then you are damaging self. And once you begin to damage self, you got to have something that's called self-care. Amen, somebody. I, I, I know this might not be one of those shouting services or something, but this is Bible study, amen. I'm going I'm, I'm to give you what I got tonight, amen. So, so, so now you're damaging yourself, and, and you're damaging all of those that are close to you because you don't want to take time for you, take time to cultivate the relationships that you have. So now everybody's hurt because you're trying to be superwoman. And then you're trying to be... I'm going to do one more, and then, I'll, and then I'll leave you alone. I'll do one more. Uh, another one is called the expert. Amen. The other one is called, it's called expert. Experts measure their competence based upon what and how much they know and can do. Believing, believing they will never know enough. The fear being exposed as inexperienced or unknowledgeable. Mm. The expert. Always trying to do something yeah, to show off your knowledge. Always trying to do something. Show off how much you know. But really, but really, but really deep down, deep down, deep down, you're scared that somebody might expose you because you don't know as much as you pretend to know. Is this good to anybody tonight? I just want to see if it's good to anybody tonight. Amen. I know I ain't hollering, but I'm just trying to see if this is good to anybody tonight. Amen. Because that, 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 that. Cause tonight, I don't, I don't want us to be imposters anymore. I don't want us to have to deal with, with, with any, any of those syndromes at all. I don't ever want us to have to deal with being pressured to do something that's out of our time and out of our season because some of us are starting businesses. Some of us are trying to get into marriages. Some of us are trying to do all kinds of things just to try to keep up, as they say, with the Joneses or keep up with, with, with your sister that just got married or keep up with your brother that just bought a house, trying to keep up with things and put on this fake, phony, uh, yeah, 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 fake and phony... Yeah, Lord, facade that, 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 that don't do you no good, only causing you hurt and damage, but yet the pressure is pushing you to try to do something ahead of time. Jesus' brothers was trying to push him to do something outside of his season. 
They were trying to push him to do something that he was not, uh, it was not his time to do. His time was coming in Passover. It was about six months away. But if they would have found him then, they would have killed him then. But yet it was not his time because everything is in proper timing and proper alignment with God has. Our problem is we want to do everything on our time and not his time. We always want to do things in our time. And then we get frustrated because it's not working the way we want it to work. Then we get frustrated because things are not coming together the way we want it to come together. We, we're going through changes because we can't control it. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I just, I just, that, that right there. Um, one of the other, I mean, I wasn't going to touch it, but I'm going to touch it now because I went there. Another one is called a control freak. That you're not even happy. You're not happy until you can control everything. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go right down the line right here. All right, it's going to be, this is going to, this, please, I need my security tonight just for a moment. Um, yeah, but this is the thing, though. Oftentimes inside of being a control freak, one of the things that you really struggle with is that um, you get mad, you get upset, you get frustrated simply because things are not going your way. And you have to control everything. You have to control everything from your job. You have to control everything in your household. You got to control your husband. You got to control your children. It, it does not work unless you are controlling all of it. And honestly, the problem is, is that you fear of losing control. You fear that you're going to lose, con lose control. If you lose control, you feel inadequate. And, and since it's not going the way that you want it to go, then it's a whole problem. And can't nobody get peace because you're trying to control everything. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. Now listen, if you, if you would just take a moment and release all of that weight. Release all of that pressure. Release all of those things that, 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 that people want to put on you to make you be in a situation to where now you are performing for them. Performing for them. Okay. Not for you. Not for God. But for them. If you take a moment to release all of that and allow God to have his way, things will begin to turn differently in your favor because now you are doing it God's way and not your way. Uh, okay, all right. All right, okay. Let's, let's practice this for just one moment. Um, I, I learned this in, in some of my counseling sessions. Amen. Everybody breathe in deep. Hold it. Let it go. Come on, breathe in deep. Hold it. Hold it. Let it go. Breathe in deep one more time. Hold it. But this time, you need to release all of the things that you're trying to perform. Somebody breathe in. Release all of the things. Y'all wasn't holding it long enough. Release all of the things that don't turn blue. Release all the stuff that you've been holding. Come on, let's try it again. Breathe in deep because y'all already breathing. Breathe in deep. And this time, let it go. Ooh, that felt so good. Because now I'm not in competition with anybody. Now... I don't have to be dealing with the pressure to perform simply because somebody is asking me or trying to put that weight on me simply because it's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. Jesus said this. He said, he said uh, uh, I, I know y'all want me to do this. Y'all want me to go down here and you want me to show off. Y'all want me to go. That's the scripture. He said, y'all want me to go down here and, and show off. Show off all my talents and show off all my, show off my anointing. Show off, because you want me to continue to entertain you by, 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 by doing miracle after miracle after miracle. And, 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 and you still don't believe in who I am, but yet you want me to perform for you. I'm, I'm, 
I'm past the place of entertaining. I'm, 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 I'm past the place of trying to get you excited, trying to get you riled up and jumping and shouting and hollering. I'm, I'm past that. I'm, I'm past that egotistical stroke. I'm past that. Because sometimes what people think when you come into the pulpit, you come into church, you got to perform, and you got to hoop, and you got to holler, and you got to scream, and you got to do all of these things. You, you got to continue doing all of that. The moment that you do all of those things is simply just a moment of having your ego stroked. That you were able to stand and perform, and the people got excited because you were performing. I'm not trying to perform. Because if I, if, if I perform... That's all you ever going to want is a performance versus the anointing. There's a difference because some will come and they will perform, but yet, but yet, and we get excited because of their performance, but but are you anointed? No, glory to God. See, I want you to take home something. I want you to hold on to something. I want you to take and begin to apply some things to your life. The anointing is something that's applied. I don't want to come in and just be entertaining. Because the moment I stop entertaining, you will find the next fella to entertain you. You'll find the next person who can sing the best song. You'll go to the next show. Never be changed. And still struggle with the same thing that you've been struggling with, that you've been fighting with. That you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your circumstances never change because now you don't have the anointing that's on your life because you never applied the basic principles. And since you didn't apply the basic principles, now you have nothing that's going to hold on to you, nothing that's going to feed you when, when, when the entertainment is off the stage. You have nothing that's going to feed you because now you have not did, did your due diligence and begin to dive into the word for yourself. You just want to be entertained. I'm bringing information that's going to clear up our vision. That we don't allow the pressure to cause us to have cataracts, cause us to do things before our time, cause us to have glaucoma, cause us to not be able to see the light that causes us the, the, the blurry vision. I, I want to give us something that in this season, restoration clear vision. Why? Because God is trying to give us something that we can't receive if we can't see. I just said a whole lot right there. We can't receive it because we can't see and we're operating in a blind place. But this year we need to operate with 2020 vision. So not only do we see the blessings clear, that now we can see the enemy clear. I just said something right there. Now not only do we, we, we see the blessing, we see what God is going to do, we, we, we see the prophecy, the prophecy is coming, we see all of that, but, but more importantly that we, we see the snake that's coming up. We see the enemy that's trying to creep in. We, we see the evil one trying to distract. We see all of these things that's trying to stop us from getting to the blessing that God has for us. And now we know what to do because we can see it. We see it coming and we don't get hit in a blind place. Because when you get hit in a blind place, it hurts more. Okay. What, what, what do you mean it hurts more now? Now, and I'm finished. I'm finished for tonight. But, but, but I want you to look at something. Um, I could be the only one in here tonight. I have been, as they call it, here in the city and, and, and most of all across the country, I've been stole before. And anybody, do anybody know what that means, being stole? Stole means sucker punched. Being hit yeah, and you didn't see it coming. I've been hit, and I didn't see it coming. I, I, I've, been, I've been hit hard. I, I, I remember walking down a flight of steps. A guy came 
from behind, hit me in the back of the head. I slid across the club because I tripped on the step. I slid across the club, ended up under a table because I didn't see it coming. Yeah. I've been to the club. Okay, I'm just going to admit, I've been to the club. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that was me. Bless Jesus. Amen. I've been to the club. Y'all should have saw how they was looking at me. I know y'all in the front couldn't see the ones in the back, but they, some of those folk back there, they were looking at me like, oh my God, they was at the club. Yes. I got, I got hit in the back of the head and I fell and I slid halfway across the floor because I was sucker punched. Because I didn't have my, my guards up. I wasn't in the right state. I wasn't in the right position. I didn't, I didn't see it. So it hurt more than getting hit when you're in a, when you're in a fight and you see it coming, it, it hurt more. When you get hit in a blind place, it hurts more. It's a shock. Thank you. There's a shock because you thought you had that area covered. You, you, you thought you had that area protected. You thought, you thought that was something you never had to worry about. But because you are operating in a blind situation, now you get hit from the blind side and it hurts more than, it, it just hurts more. And I don't want us to get hit in our blind spot. I want us to be able to see properly. And if we're able to see properly, we can see where the enemy is trying to destroy us. Amen, somebody. Jesus simply said, it's not my time yet. It's not my time. It's not my, come on, let us stand all over the building. I got to quit. He said, it's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. Key word, yet. My time is coming. But not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. My time for me to do what I'm called to do is coming. But not yet. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But it's coming. My time is, is, is on the way. It's, 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 it's coming. I realize that God is, is trying to take us to another level. But we cannot run ahead of God. We cannot run ahead of God's timing. We run ahead of God's timing. We run ahead of his covering. And if we run ahead of his covering, we run ahead of his protection. And it leaves us exposed when we run ahead of God. He said, it's not my time yet. I need you to do me a favor and touch at least three people and tell them not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Come on, touch three people, tell them not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Come on, touch somebody else, tell them not yet, not, not yet. I, I don't have to go public yet. No, 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 I don't have to go public yet. No, uh-uh. I'm not going to start that business yet. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Not yet. But I'm so glad you said yet. Because yet means it's on the way. And everything that God promised me is going to come to pass in due season. Now, in, in due season it shall come. It shall come to pass. Grab somebody by the hand and we're going to get ready to get out of here. We'll do offering and we'll get out of here. I pray that you got something out of this tonight. My season is coming. My time is it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's right around the corner, matter of fact. I, I know everything don't match up the way the way I saw it. It don't, it don't match up. With the, I know all of it don't, it just don't match up. It just don't, and then sometimes it don't even feel like it's going to happen at all. But, 
but I'm yet holding on. Y'all remember that when they said, well, you holding on and yet holding on will keep on keeping on. There's a promise in the yet. There's a promise in yet. If we wait on the Lord, yeah, if we wait on the Lord, I could go scripture after scripture with those who ran ahead of God's timing and almost blew it all. Almost jacked the promise all the way up. Hmm. Almost jacked it all the way up. But God saw fit to still bless them. But it didn't come when they wanted it to come. It came when God allowed it to come and when he wanted it to come. Amen. Amen. Come on, for, for, about, for about the next 30 seconds, come on, pray for, pray for your neighbor quickly. Come on, pray for your neighbor. Come on. You might not even know him, but just pray for him. Come on, God. Come on, God. Bless this hand that I'm holding. The one on the left hand, the one on the right. Bless them now. Give them everything that they that they need, Master. Give them strength. And they're not yet seasoned. Give them strength to hold out and not be pressured. Not be pressured to go to go public too soon. Not be pressured to operate outside of your will. Not be pressured to perform when it's not yet that time. God bless this hand that I'm holding. Anoint them now in a fresh God. Allow them to feel your presence. And Master, clear up everything that might be blurry. Begin to clear up everything, Lord God, that, that might be blurry in their life. Give them clear vision. Perfect vision. 2020 vision. God, I thank you and I praise you for just that. It's in Jesus' name. We all say amen. Come on, loose those hands and give God a praise. Simple of praise, it is offering time. Amen. Get your tithe, get your seed, your love in your hand. Amen. Get your tithe, get your seed, and your love in your hand. Amen. If I can challenge you tonight, ask all of you to $12 seed. $12 seed on Wednesday night, amen. Twelve, Just a $12 seed, amen. Amen. As our deacons and deaconess are coming, preparing to receive the offering, our prayer has been that we have 100% tithing in this house, and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it, 100% tithing in this house, amen, 100% tithing, that everybody in this house is a tither, amen. One hundred percent tithing in this house, amen. I've been using text to give, I love it, I just text a number and it goes direct my face, who is my yeah, mom. So I have to give my offering tonight as well, amen. I was taught lead by example. Lead by example, lead by example. I, I can't ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Amen. Amen. Do you have your offering ready? I'm waiting. Yeah, amen, I'm waiting for you. 
of those that are still filling out envelopes. Bless you. Amen. Sound like that hurt. I lift your offering up high. God, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. By the directions of your ushers. Everybody have an opportunity to give? Amen. Come on, stand with me all over the building so we can, we can depart from here. I never leave a service without getting the benediction. Amen. Last announcement on Saturday morning. Saturday morning. We come to celebrate the life of Mother Murder. And amen. Saturday morning, we come celebrate the life of Mother Murder wonderful woman who took me in when I first got here to this church who took me in and then just loved on me just loved on me and I'm so thankful amen that she that she came by this way amen I'm so thankful because if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be here today amen if it wasn't for her, I would not be here today. If it wasn't for this woman, we wouldn't be here today. But let me try it one more time, amen. If it wasn't for this woman right here, we wouldn't be in this building, amen. We wouldn't be in this building at all. And I'm just thankful for this great woman of God. She used to do something on her every once in a while. She would just tell me, come past the house and pick up a pan of rolls. Everybody can't make rolls, all right? This woman made some rolls that would literally melt in your mouth. Nice good butter roll. I was just having a whole moment, slightly, slightly browned on top, and all soft in the middle. And, uh, I'm hoping she passed the recipe down. But we're going to come, we're going to have a good time. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate her life. Amen. So it will be here. Um, we're asking all uh, of our leadership. This is an official service. We will be in our clergy attire. Amen. All of the deacons be in your proper attire. Deacons be in their proper attire. Because um, we're going to serve. This is a day of service. And want to make sure that we serve the family properly. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Father, we thank you. 
for what you've done on this day. Father, we thank you for what we've heard. Thank you for what we've seen. Help us, God. Help us, God, that we don't try to perform under pressure. Help us, God, that we don't allow anybody to push us further and, 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 and in places that we're not supposed to be just yet. Push us before your time. God, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Hug at least three people. Hug at least three people. Love on somebody. Tell them that you love them. I'll see you Saturday. And for the ones who's not coming Saturday, I'll see you Sunday morning. Amen.